Last time on Square Roots, our heroes enter with a bang when they blow a Mako reactor. Tifa serves up some drinks and some backstory, and Cloud falls off a bridge but comes out smelling like a rose. Talk about your flower power! And welcome to Square Roots, the classic RPG podcast. My name is Jim Banks. I am joined by Matthew Van Zant. Hello, hello. John Mucky Brandon. Hey, Bubby. How are you, Bubby? And Vanessa. I'm Vanessa. And this is a podcast where we play and talk about your favorite classic RPGs. Uh, this is episode two in our Final Fantasy VII series. Hey, Yay. that's a lot of people's favorite classic RPG. That is, that's, is this anybody's favorite favorite classic RPG? It's definitely Ooh. yours. It's, it's up there. It's mine. It's real. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if it's my favorite favorite, but it's like top five for sure. I mean, y'all have played Final Fantasy X, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I really like it. My answer is the snobby answer. Final Fantasy Tactics is my favorite. <laughs> With its ugly graphics. With its amazing <laughs> graphics. I like Final Fantasy VI because I'm old. Mm-hmm. School. <laughs> old school. Sorry, what Grandma. I was say. Turns out <laughs> around, skateboards out of the room. <laughs> Sorry, Gran. <laughs> uh, I love that Final Fantasy VI. I love that lock and his little bandana and his open shirt. Mm, I mean, I mean, it's me, <laughs> horny grandma. <laughs> horny grandma would be way into Vincent, though. You think? Uh, what? Horny yeah. grandma would not be into Vincent at all. He's a he's like this this dreamboat vampire. Ugh, You're he's like confusing a dour your horny nerd. grandma with your friend Vanessa. Oh right, sorry. <laughs> Both loves dour nerds and vampires. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Only true. not actually vampires. Oh. oh, but those dour nerds. Yummy, 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 yummy. <laughs> so, guys, should we talk about how we leveled up? Well, what did we do on this podcast there? I already uh, said it, John. Oh, sorry. Maybe you should have been paying attention the first time, John. Did he say it, though? I don't know that I did. he did say it. I don't think he okay. did. Remember? Because I said classic RPGs, and I said, is this anybody's favorite classic RPG? And oh. then we talked about our favorite classic RPGs. I do remember that now. <laughs> I seem to remember talking bell. about RPGs. Hey, Jim. Hmm. How did you level up this weekend? I saw I saw the movie Sonic, the live action Sonic. Is that what the movie's called? The live action Sonic. It's called the live action Sonic, starring uh, who's that guy? The Jim Sonic guy. Sonic. James Marsden. James Marsden and Sonic. Ben Schwartz. Sonic. I heard that as himself. movie goes by fast. That's his last name. I heard that movie goes by fast, guys. Oh. It, guys, it, do, it does the, actually. The movie. Are you trying out your? I heard it goes by fast. <laughs> yep. Okay. Hey. Well, I heard it has a fast runtime. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> now, hope that we can move past these jokes quickly. <laughs> hey, by the way, but Sonic is a good movie, and you guys should go see it because it's really funny. I won't go see it because what's I it about? Am it's an a... adult. It's about a hedgehog named Sonic who comes to Earth from a parallel dimension, I guess. Oh, so it's not even set in Sonic Land? It begins there. What but that's a not bummer. where the bulk of the movie is set. What is a, he cop a hedgehog, out. though? He claims he's a hedgehog in the movie. He comes from an island where all of the residents are anthropomorphic animals, and he's raised by a giant owl. Now, if you remember in the 80s, taking a beloved children's property and then setting it on Earth for some reason was like the in thing to do. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, this game like, does a good man. job of that. But I'd say the the best part of the movie is Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik. That's I heard that he a goes. crazy thing to say. He is hilarious and he's he plays a character like the like someone who's 
confident he's the smartest person in the world to the point where he actively hates everybody else for not being <laughs> as smart as him. And he plays the whole movie just constantly insulting every other character, and it's hilarious. I heard that it's very much Jim Carrey kind of returning to his... Returning to his returning to form in the crazy yeah, you old can tell, Jim Carrey like, roles. You can tell he's having a blast with it. Like he's That's cool. he's all over like every scene. He has a choreographed uh dance number where he's trying to do research on Sonic and he sets it to music and he's dancing around his trailer doing research. It's really funny. I sense delightful. Yeah, it's pretty great. Go see Sonic. Um bop bop bop. Um Vanessa, how did you level up? Ah, I also saw a movie. Speaking I of saw bop, bop, a bop. movie called uh, Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, or maybe it was called The Birds of Prey, Harley Quinn is Emancipated. It is currently titled Harley Quinn colon Birds of Prey. Okay, uh, that's the movie I saw. It was good. Uh, as longtime listeners will know, I love Gotham City. And the rogues gallery from the Batman comics. I do not like Batman himself. I think he is <laughs> a dumb boy. Uh, so I liked this movie because it was set in Gotham City and featured members of the rogues gallery, but did not have Batman himself. Yay! Yay! Did you find it cool. funny? Yes, it was funny. Uh, I thought that Margot Robbie did a great job. I think she's a really good actress. I think that... Sometimes her talent is overlooked because she's so good looking that people mm-hmm. are just focused on that and missing the fact that she actually gives really good performances on top of being very good looking. Everything I've seen her in, she has been excellent. Yeah, she was in that I Tanya movie. That was mm-hmm. fantastic. Oh yeah. She's I really love that good movie. in she's really good in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. She just doesn't have a lot of dialogue. She does yeah. a lot of acting. She just does not have a lot of dialogue. I haven't seen that, and I haven't seen Wolf of Wall Street, which I think was sort of her U.S. breakthrough role. I've never seen that yeah. movie either. I understand she doesn't have a lot to do in either. She but... is Australian. It's Australia. true. She's like Rocco, and she lives a modern life. <laughs> yeah. She's like Chris Hemsworth. Mm-hmm. Australia has sent us their female Chris Hemsworth, and it is Margot Robbie. That's kind of diminishing of her, and I take it back. I apologize to women, to Margot Robbie, and to Chris Hemsworth while I'm at it. I'm sure I've done something to wrong him. Uh, Anyway, it was good. I liked it. I also watched a movie called Midsommar. Well, did you like it? I did like it. I really want to see that. Me too, but I'm so traumatized by... Hereditary. Hereditary. <laughs> I, haven't, yeah. I haven't taken the the dive into Midsummer yet. It is from you, the friends who brought you Hereditary, the movie that kept you up for two weeks. If you want to stay up for another two weeks, which try one was Midsommar. Hereditary? That's oh, the Tony one with Collette. Tony Collette and the kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, Midsummer, it's good, and I watched a movie called. A Dark Place or something like that. It had um, Andrew Scott in it, which is why I watched it, because I do love Andrew Scott. It was not a good movie, my friends. Uh, I would not recommend. He plays a American uh, garbage truck driver who has some kind of undefined mental deficiency, mm. and he tries to solve a murder. Mm. Uh-oh. I've seen that. That's, is that on Amazon Prime? It is on Amazon I, Prime. I've almost watched that a few times, and now I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, you made the right choice. I was suckered in by Hot Priest Hype, uh, coming hot on top of his uh, turn as uh, Moriarty in the Sherlock series. Oh, that And guy. also, I think he did a uh, scene as Pryor once from Angels in America. He may have been Pryor. I don't remember who he played, but he was brilliant. He's a very good actor. Um, when you say hot priest, you mean Fleabag, right? Yeah, I mean Fleabag. Yeah. The hot priest show. <laughs> <laughs> he was in James Bond. Is that what you said, Matt? He was in James Bond. I wonder if he's in the new one. We can only hope because I'm always down to see more Andrew Scott unless what it's in that movie in? I watched because I don't want to watch it in. again. Yeah, I don't worry. Oh, he was in that uh, 1917 movie. Oh, that's what it was. Good pull, Vanessa. I didn't see Thank that yet, you. but I want to. 
I have not seen that either. Uh, so that's what I watched. Uh, if you are going to choose which ones of those to watch, watch Midsommar. And if you still have time to watch a movie, watch Harley Quinn. Actually, go see Harley Quinn first. Go see it in the theater. It's not doing well financially. And I don't have a stake in it, but uh, it makes uh, terrible men on Twitter happy that it's failing. So mm -hmm. uh, try to make them unhappy by That's spending some point. money on it. Mm -hmm. I think that it's worth seeing in theaters, too, just to back up your point. I think that the action scenes are big and dynamic and are definitely the type of things, uh, the type of scenes that benefit from seeing them humongous and loud. Yeah, if you like um, sort of uh, tertiary Batman characters like Huntress or, well, if you like Cassandra Cain from the comics, you'll probably just be confused by what's going on in the movie. But if you like Renee Montoya... Uh, if you like Black Canary and you are not the kind of fan who minds seeing alternate universe versions of them, uh, then go see it. Why not? You have nothing better to do. Go see it. Who Dummies. played Black Canary? Something Smollett Jr. Journey Smollett, Smollett Bell. Bell. Yeah, she, she was good. She also is excellent. Yeah, she's phenomenal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that everyone did a good job performance-wise. Ewan McGregor was in it. He was fun. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. He gets to ham it up. Good yeah, it was him. fun to see him. And uh, as uh, Black Mask, which is a character that you don't really see in uh, Batman visual media outside. Well, I guess comics themselves are visual media. You know yeah. what I'm trying to <laughs> he's say. He's in the Arkham games, right? Yeah, he's definitely it in the is... Arkham games, and he's shown oh, up in the animated was... series. Oh, he is in one of them for sure. Movies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John, how did you level up? I leveled up by watching something everybody loves. Raymond. A 44 year old British televised historical drama. Emma. It's called I Claudius. I Claudius. You watched I Claudius? I'm watching I Claudius. I just watched the first episode. Where'd you find uh, it? iTunes. Oh, you wow. bought it? I bought it for $20, but there's like, each episode's like an hour and a half and there's nine episodes. So that's a lot of TV. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, it's quite a big, big, uh, undertaking to watch. That's three but... whole seasons of Sherlock right there. <laughs> yep. It's got, uh, Brian Blessed. It's mm -hmm. got John Hurt. Mm -hmm. It's got Patrick Stewart and John Reese Davies. Is Patrick all very... Stewart the titular I Claudius? Uh, no. Who does Patrick Stewart play? I don't know. I haven't got to him yet. Hmm. So, uh, I think that's George Baker plays Claudius. I, no. Oh, no. Uh, Derek Jacoby. Derek Jacoby. Who you'd know as a, a character actor. He's very, very good. And the show is shot on British video. So it has mm -hmm. that British BBC video look, but it's really engaging. It's just you have to have a lot of patience. And they, sh because he's playing, uh, Augustus Caesar, they shaved Brian Blessed's beard. No. Oh. He looks like an angry football boy. Like <laughs> he just looks like this, this, especially with his weird Caesar haircut, and it's just his giant chin. He just looks like a, a large child in a very weird way. Um, but, I know. I imagine that the reason you started watching it is because of the I Claudius podcast. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't listened to that yet, but I'm going to because that has uh, two of my favorite people, John Hodgman and Elliot Kalin. It's delightful. It's called iPodius. Yes. It is. I listened to the first two episodes today, and I loved every minute of it. And I actually spent half the day thinking about hunting down iClaudius and trying to watch it. It's not expensive. And I think they're all on YouTube if you want to watch them there. Ooh, perfect. I grew yeah. up watching a lot of that weird BBC flat drama stuff. Uh, what was the Vet series? All Things Great and Small? Yeah. Yeah, that's a fun um, one. I've watched a bunch of that stuff. I, my, uh, all creatures great and small. All creatures great and small. Um, one of the, my parents were divorced growing up and my dad refused to have any sort of like cable or consoles or anything like that. He just had like a super old television. So basically I just watched a bunch of like PBS stuff and it was all that ah. wild, wild west and that. Right. Yes. Uh, so I have been enjoying that. And I've also done, oh, uh, this, there's this plot line I just got through in Final Fantasy 14 where it's to prep you for meeting Titan, the like, who's a big boss in the game. 
and uh, it's ten hours of fetch quests on purpose, and it's to annoy you on purpose. And it's like mm-hmm. I get what they're doing here, but it's like because it has a there's a narrative reason why you're doing dumb fetch quests to build a nice dinner for everybody. But this is 10 hours, like, or maybe five hours. This is five hours of my life doing something really dumb. And, uh, I mean, the game apparently gets way better in the expansions and people have suggested that I skip the, this content, but I kind of like, you know, I paid for it. I kind of want to see the dungeons and stuff and, and I'm not doing any of the side quests. I'm just doing only main story quests and I don't have to grind. So it's fine. Uh, I will start grinding after I get to the other expansions, but I'm having fun. Like some of the quests are really fun. You, you find this guy who says he's part of this heroic guild, but he's lying and he's just making you do his chores. And <laughs> there's a point where he wants to challenge you because he's getting mad at how everyone thinks you're better than him to breaking a rock. And it plays like original Final Fantasy one music as you're attacking rocks together. And he starts cheating and throwing bombs. And, and he's like this, uh, dreamboat muscle guy wearing a, a denim speedo. It's pretty amazing. And Rainbow uh, muscle guy. Wearing a denim speedo and a denim like <laughs> leather. That sounds painful. Yeah, yeah. His outfit does not look super comfortable to wear. Uh but you know, I like the I like except he's wearing it's all ruined by this sun hat that he's wearing that makes him look like a fisherman. <laughs> anyway, uh so that's what I've been doing. What about you, Matt? I have three things. What were they? Well, I remember the first one. Uh, thing one. You can have lots of fun. Thank you, John. <laughs> uh, I played a game. have not finished it yet. I started playing a game I think everybody should check out. So let's call this a recommendation. Uh, and an old one. Matt I found recommends. on Game Pass, Ori in the Ooh. Blind Forest, which I've heard is good. But I didn't know much about it. I thought I kind of assumed it was like a puzzle platformer like Celeste. You know, uh, yeah, that was I mean. like a Metroidvania, but it's not. Yeah, well, it is. It's a Metroidvania, not like a puzzle platformer, and okay. um, which is more up my alley. And I'm, I'm, I don't know how far into it I am, but uh, it doesn't look very long. But uh, it's super That's fun. What she it's said. slick. Oh. oh boy, it's pretty. <laughs> it plays well. It's got a cute little main character that's kind of like a glowing white cat monkey type of thing. Uh, that you run around as, and uh, it's he- it's really really good. So if you if that one uh, passed by your radar like it did mine, Ori in the Blind Forest is super great. I'm probably definitely gonna finish it, which is rare for me. Um, thing two, it's just me and you. Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> um, thing two, there's so much we can do. I kind of burned out on. Uh, my X-Men read through on Operation Zero Tolerance, which is some like real late 90s, like just kind of miserable nonsense. So anyway, I started reading a comic book called Giant Days. Giant Days. It's about three ladies in college in England somewhere. I don't know exactly where. All of those towns <laughs> sound the same to me. Hertfordshire, Berkshire. Are they giants? They're not giants. It's just about three women in college, and it is a delightful uh, read. It's full of humor and very expressive illustration, and just kind of about these people living their lives. It kind of vacillates between being super over-the-top wacky and um, heartfelt wacky, uh, and I think it does the latter better. But uh, it's a lot of fun. So if you're in the market for something new to read, Giant Days. And number three. It's just you and And this one kind of ties into something that Vanessa talked about. I watched an episode of a show called Hot Ones. Hot Hot Ones Ones is good. Hot Ones is on YouTube. Jonathan and Vanessa, have you heard of Hot Ones? No. No. Hot Ones is an interview show where a man whose name I do not know off the top of my head. I can't remember it either. He's a very good interviewer, and he interviews a celebrity. Uh, the first episode that I watched, he interviewed Margot Robbie, and I learned that she is Australian. And I learned that she worked on the same soap opera that Nicole Kidman and Chris Hemsworth and several other famous Australian stars all worked on when they were Ooh. young up-and-comers in Australia. Was I thought it that Neighbors? was interesting. 
probably. I don't know. Okay, that like guy sort of is Australian such a good head. interviewer. Like he de- he dived deep. Man, and the celebrities, like, they genuinely like being interviewed by him. Like, yeah. it's weird how many celebrities will just stop and be like, you're so good at this. Yeah. Uh, he well, is. here's the, John and Vanessa, here's the premise. He interviews a celebrity while the two of them each consume ten hot wings. They get progressively at hotter. Mildly spicy and ending at the type of thing that would leave a burn mark on you if you left it on your skin too long. Whoa, that Whoa. is hot. And yeah. the interesting thing is, they, it, it seems like it, on top of being kind of just an interesting premise, these things are hot. And I don't, I, it's legitimately shocking that people make it through these. Uh, I guess some people don't. I haven't watched very many episodes. But, uh, it really, I think somebody said that it's like being drunk at some point. Like the hot is, the heat is so much because they have to sit with it. It's not just eat them real. It's not just, it's over the course of 30 minutes that they sit with this heat. And I mean, they do seem to kind of lose their minds. And one it's of the celebrities, I don't remember who, but like was starting to kind of hallucinate towards the end. <laughs> uh, they get real and then it makes them real open and honest when they're not motherfucking the wings that they're eating and motherfucking the host for feeding them this <laughs> pure fire. Um, so I watched three episodes. I watched one with uh, Margot Robbie, and she seemed to have uh, a not very spicy familiar palate, but she did manage to do all ten wings. It was quite crazy. Um, they give them water and milk, and eventually as they start giving them... Milk. Eventually they start, well, it's even the milk's not enough apparently because eventually they start getting things like ice chips and slices of citrus fruits. Um, they have all sorts of stuff to try and calm down the fire. Uh, anyway, Margaret Robbie, she did all 10 and was really good. Um, I mean, she like is losing it at some point. It's like almost in tears. It's crazy. Uh, and then I watched an episode with Gordon Ramsay. Whom I love. I know that he is not for everyone because he's a big jackass. But he was pretty entertaining. He had like a bag with him that was stuffed full of stuff. He had donuts. He had like Maylock Maylox or something in it, right? He, he like, did. He had Pepto-Bismol, yeah. which he drank an entire fucking glass of. <laughs> and he screamed at the interviewer because he's like, you know that I have to go to work and taste things tomorrow, right? It was pretty funny. But he said uh, he made it clear that he had gone on because his kids badgered him, him into it because they watched the show. Which I thought was pretty funny. And then you had the last episode that I watched had John Boyega, who came on and calmly ate all 10 wings. And then at the end, uh, pointed out that he never took a sip of water or drank a sip of milk at all. And I was legitimately so impressed. It's the <laughs> great. I couldn't believe that he got through all 10 of those things without even a sip of water. I would have died. <laughs> Anyway, Hot Ones. It's a very interesting interview show, and I guess it's popular. Uh, it's also on True TV now, and there's like a spinoff game show with the same host where he takes two pairs of two people and makes them eat crazy hot wings and answer questions for money. Uh, and I watched the first episode of that, and it was also it was pretty entertaining. Yeah, that guy's a good interview. He has, he has like a gift for it. It's yeah, pretty, it's pretty fun to watch. A lot of it seems to be preparation. He does seem to dive deep into their bios and find things that uh, people don't. I don't know. He's, he starts like super deep too. He ne- there are no like fluff questions. They go straight into it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I th- I don't agree with that. I think there's some fluff questions, but he definitely <laughs> he definitely like he pulled out a picture of Gordon Ramsay serving Vladimir Putin and. Who was the British Prime Minister in, during Bush? What was his name? Uh, Tony? Not John Tony Major. Blair. Tony Blair. Yeah. I think it was Blair and Putin who came to his restaurant and he like was asking them questions about those guys meeting them in person during this time period and yada, yada, yada. And fucking Gordon Ramsay remembered the menu that he served them, which was <laughs> really impressive. Anyway. That's how I leveled up. Hot ones, giant days. If, uh, if there was such a thing as hell and I was in it, I think English panel chat shows would be one of the things I would be subjected to. <sighs> uh, it's not an English panel chat show. I'm just saying. Um, 
Okay. Well, I think maybe it's time for us to move on to the big deal for this week. Final Fantasy VII, Episode Woo. Two. Woo. Quest log, quest log. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. So, where do we leave off last time? We saw Tifa being uh, escorted through Wall Market in a carriage. Mm hmm. In a chocobo drawn carriage. Right. Who? Tifa. Tifa? Tifa. <laughs> <laughs> Did we lose Vanessa at some point? No, nah, I'm still here. No. I'm trying to get past these roly polies in the Temple of the Ancients. Oh, jeez! Are you playing right now? No, I'm just <laughs> saying that it's difficult to get past the roly pole. Look, what else am I supposed to do while I you guys are talking part. about some level up this and I watch some TV show? You know, I can't eat spicy food. It was all very triggering for me. But I do want to go to a Gordon Ramsay restaurant, so uh, we should look at that. Okay, there, we might be able to do so. Well, that's what I'm saying, because I've never been to a Gordon Ramsay restaurant, and I want to know, does his food live up to the hype? I, I have had some, like, goulash at one of them, I think, or something goulash. like that. It was good. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that they did in that episode of Hot Ones at the very end, after they'd done the last and hottest wing, is he pulled over a little kitchen thingy and made Gordon Ramsay make him Gordon Ramsay's scrambled eggs. Mm-hmm. And you know what? They looked runny. <gasps> so, the wall market. Oh, Jim, do you want to do this or should I do it? No, go ahead. Oh, boy, Jim. It's the wall market. One of the highlights of, I would say, any JRPG ever. It's one of my favorite sections. <laughs> <laughs> when you, uh, when you get there, you're chasing after where, where, uh, Tifa was taken. So we head north to Don Corneo's fabulous mansion. Or Mance? Which do you prefer? Where does the word Mance come from? I mean, it's an old term that they use in Final Fantasy XII for some <laughs> I reason. I was reading the notes and I saw your <laughs> term. I was like, huh. <laughs> uh, and he's kind of into Eris, but he's like, uh, you got to come back with some cute friends. There's already a bad guy to woman ratio. So bring a cute friend back here and I will totally let you in to the fabulous mansion. What is happening already? I am seeing some red flags in this section. Uh Uh-oh. Why is that? I don't know. There's something about the gender division and only letting someone in if they have cute friends. Mm -hmm. I feel like something untoward may be going on. Well, Eris has an idea. Where's Eris going to find a cute friend? She's like, given Cloud's slight physique and his perfect porcelain features he could work a femoral just as easily as um, being a member of soldier so why doesn't he try exploring his feminine side to get inside the mansion uh cloud is easily talked into anything in this chunker so that's great and he's like yeah i guess sure sounds fun to me so first stop the dress shop but, oh, For no. a guy who originally was like, just give me my money, I just want to get paid, <laughs> uh-huh. he has become really amiable really quickly. Yep. He, he's still like, I'm just doing it for the money. Okay, well, I just need you to wear this pretty dress. Fine. I'm just doing it for the money. Now I'm going to get some nice panties and makeup, and it's going to be wonderful. For the money. <laughs> this is a very involved whole situation you have to go through to get a pretty dress mm-hmm. for Cloud. Yep. I have thoughts when you, <laughs> about this dress. <laughs> when you get to the dress shop, the daughter of the dressmaker is pissed off because her dad is out drinking and not tailoring up a beautiful dress. So in order to get that dress, she asks that you can, if you can go find her dad. So you and Eris 
decide to head over to the bar where he is practically passed out at the counter. But he drunk. He uh, super drunk and bored. This this bar looks pretty nice. There's like a whole karaoke section. It looks I don't know. This doesn't look so bad. There's somebody vomiting in the bathroom. Yeah, she's not doing super great. Uh so you, Eris is like, "Hey, Cloud here is exploring his gender identity, and uh I'm wondering if you could help him by tailoring a perfect dress that will really accentuate his his form." And the guy's like, "Oh, you know what? I have uh, friends going through the same same situation, and yeah, I'm totally up for helping and helping Cloud to uh, really find himself or, or herself. Really He's positively inspired by Cloud's yeah. desire to dress up as a woman." Yeah, it's like, you know, you're a dressmaker and you start thinking, am I really helping people with this or am I just part of the fashion industry that uh, tells women that they should look a certain way and oppresses people by trying to make them conform to some uh, unreachable idealistic goal? And uh, then this guy comes along and he's like, no, I'm helping people express their identity and it's great to do what I do. This Mm -hmm. is a wonderful story. Exactly. So you head back to the dress shop and you get some options on what kind of dress you want. Something that shimmers, something that's soft. I went for uh, soft and shimmers, I think. I wanted a soft and shimmery dress, too. Right. Because there is an ideal path here to get the best dress possible. I didn't know about that, but I just thought that soft and shimmery was the best look, and the guy complimented my taste. You do have excellent dress taste, because that is the ideal dress. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Uh, But, so, Eris dresses up Cloud, and uh, then uh, is like, well, there's something missing, and and then the the, uh, tailor's like, well, you know what we need is a wig. Not just any wig. I know I have some friends, uh, as I said, that that are are dealing with with uh, challenging gender norms and and finding their identity, and maybe they could help you. Uh, they're over at the. I think the gym in Japanese is like men, men, men gym. In the uh, the kanji or katakana. Oh, over really? The door. Yeah, something like that. And it's a gym for men. It sure is. <laughs> and you know how something can be problematic, but also address like something you haven't really seen in, in a game before. This is one of those sections. This is the blue oyster equivalent from police Academy. This is a real gay gym. Oh, I remember the blue oyster. The first time you saw a gay club. And I love this section. This section is super problematic with predatory queer people, but it's also like fun and silly. And I really enjoy it. It's what, like you can enjoy something that is not great, but even if it's bad representation, it's still representation. And you know, yeah, that, that's what this is. So you get to the gym and there is, uh, uh, people keep saying, well, big bro will help you get a wig, but big bro. You'll have to challenge Big Bro to a squatting contest. And wait, isn't it beautiful? So it doesn't be- – wait, isn't there a Beautiful Bro? Beautiful Bro has the wig, but you have to do squats against Big Bro? I thought Beautiful – I thought they were the same person, but – oh, you don't – you're right. You don't squat against Big Beautiful Bro. You squat against beautiful Big Bro. bro is, beautiful Bro is the one who says you have to do the squats, right? Right, yeah. Yeah. And then, you have a mini game where you have to challenge Big Bro to squats. And he how many squats a... did you guys do? Do you remember? Oh. Mm, I think I did I f- twenty. Also, I, I did forgot 22. to turn off the like times three speed. Oh no! So I did like two squats. <laughs> <laughs> twenty-two, Jim. Twenty-two. But I did the practice round beforehand just to make sure I got the timing right. And uh, yeah, I totally clobbered Big Bro and got that wig. Everyone was super happy with me. So so the guy all the guys in the gym other than Beautiful Bro are like big muscle bears in singlets, which is quite something. They're the main one, Mucky. You can't really talk to him here, but he's got a Freddie Mercury mustache. <laughs> Which does go into like the Japanese, uh, stereotypes about what gay people are. They're sort of like leather men and muscle men and Freddie Mercury. Like anytime you sort of see, especially in older Japanese media, 
uh, from around this time and before. It's always like big, look, looks like a Tom of Finland kind of character. And, uh, so you get that wig. And uh, I think you have to beat like 16, right? To, to get it. He, yeah, I think he will do like 16 or 17. Yeah. Um, I do love, there's a, the, there's a, uh, wrestling ring in the middle of the gym with a big muscle man on it. Like, it looks sort of a, like a Randy Savage kind of screaming picture. I love that. I just love this area. And, uh, that's it. That's how you get the wig. And it's a beautiful blonde wig. Eris is very happy. Uh, there's some other stuff you can do. I think the wig and the dress are the two things you have to do. And the other stuff is optional to get a better score on your dress. Correct. So the other things you can do is we taught you, uh, you mentioned there's a sick woman at the bathroom in the bar. Uh, if you order food at the diner down the street, you get a pharmacy coupon. And with that pharmacy coupon, you can get some digestive medicine, which you can bring to her, which helps her with her tum tum. And then she uh, gives you some perfume. And then the guy who's been waiting to pee for like the past three hours is real happy. Uh, also, there's another guy at the materia store who wants to get the most expensive item from the vending machines at the inn. And I thought he meant the honeybee inn. So I was getting really freaked out that I couldn't find it. <laughs> but there's another inn that you can go to. And, uh, yeah, uh, Vanessa made fun of me because I didn't have enough money for it. So I had to go grind. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He was second didn't have the 200 gill to buy the stuff from the, no, the vending I was machine. <laughs> buying equipment from the, uh, the machine gun store. <laughs> so, uh, you have to go to the other inn, stay there, and then get something from the vending machines. And I, what's the joke going to be that you think it's going to be panties, but it turns out to be a protein drink set? I don't, I don't know. I wasn't sure what to expect because he's like, oh, I, but then when you give him the protein shake set, he's like, oh, now I'll finally be able to like compete. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what he means. Like he's going to sell better protein shakes. Well, maybe he, he means compete at the gym. Oh, I don't, I don't know. (laughs) I I don't know either. (laughs) Uh, but there's one more place to go to Jim. Uh, and it's the Honey Bee Inn. I think you find the membership card. Is, do you get it from the guy at the Materia store? Or do you no, get it from- there's a guy right outside of the entrance to the screen where the entrance of the Honey Bee Inn is, like in the market, on the market screen. Mm-hmm. He's just standing there near the exit and you can go talk to him and he's like, oh, you can have this. And it's a Honey Bee Inn membership card. Ah, okay. So there are several rooms. In the Honey Bee Inn, and they're all this, amazing. <laughs> this was weird. I remember, I very ex- uh, explicitly remember this and being like, what? 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 Oh, what? Oh, you know, like that, that picture of that lady trying kombucha where she's like kind of disgusted, but then like, huh. You know, it's like the <laughs> meme of the lady with like the grossed out face and then the maybe face. You know what I'm talking about, the blonde lady? Sure. Nope. Oh. Never seen it. Oh. I think you're talking about the lady who points at the cat and the cat is like, what? Nope, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> not that. I love that meme, but no. Uh, so, Vanessa, uh, yeah. which of these rooms is your favorite? Well, there's so many to choose from. But I guess I like the like heavy into role play room where they're doing a full sort of chant about raising a goddess. They seem to really be into like a serious D and D game. Uh huh. And uh, the president of Shinra is in there playing as well. Mm hmm. And uh, his uh, compatriots are trying not to break character as he is talking about how uh, (laughs) the end of the world will come. I can only assume they're wearing robes and they're chanting. They have candles. They've drawn a pentagram. It's all in good fun. You don't Uh, see much because you're looking through a keyhole. Mm -hmm. And so all you see is like it's dark red and you see like some people moving, but it's very hard to make out what you see in this Mm -hmm. room. But... There is a video on YouTube where they took out the filter and you just see the, the President Shinra running around dressed like King Friday the 13th from uh, Mr. Rogers. 
That's amazing. And uh, like the part where someone's really frightened by him, he like teleports next to them in a really funny way. It's kind of creepy and bizarre. He's just wandering around the room and everyone's just, just really, uh, uh, yeah, playing along with his bizarre fantasy. And one thing he does sort of talk about things from the plot of the game. He says, a legend has been passed down through generations. The one with blue eyes and a great sword in his back will not lead us to the promised land. Ooh. It's interesting that you guys read this as like a D and D thing. Cause I had no idea what to make of it at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah I got the impression <laughs> that he's like, try, I, he was role playing some great hero, you know, with the legends that have been passed around. And, uh, he could be talking about, there are two ones with blue eyes and a great sword on their back. So he yeah. could be talking about one of two people, really. At least there might be others. Oh yeah, sure. there is definitely another, isn't there? There now is. I think of, <laughs> we'll Spoiler there. alert. I do know about the existence of the third. Uh, so yeah, this is amazing. There's also another room you can spy in on with a certain horny grandma. What? Me? <laughs> well, she's not that horny. See, their son who works for Shinra has got them this room and it's very expensive and they don't know really what to do there. They're wondering if they should go to bed or what. They're just kind of, it's an old couple just lying on the bed and, uh, you can like spy on them. I know what to do in there. <laughs> oh yeah. Please don't make me follow that up. <laughs> <laughs> More like funny BM. Am I right? Uh huh. So the the grandma and the grandpa they're just they're just a nice old couple they don't really want to be do there but they feel kind of pressured to be having fun even since it's such an expensive room and if you look uh I don't know what you can see but if you look at the unfiltered version a little kit she is bouncing in the tub in that room kit oh I didn't notice oh uh, what kit she are you talking about a Kate Sith. Kate I am Sith. Talking about a Ket she. Uh she meaning like a Banshee. Ket. You're Ket or Cat. Yeah, I think both are fine. Mm. I looked up several pronunciations, but uh apparently Ket she is the most accurate, but Gaelic is also very, very hard to pronounce, and I'm probably butchering it. Are you talking about a Kate Sith? I am. <laughs> There's a little mini Ket she in the tub. Do you think that the mini Ketshi is being controlled by the couple's son, who got them the room, who's just checking to make sure they had a good time? Maybe. Maybe. Or or, or he's not very good at giving presents, which seems pretty obvious. So he has a little Ketshi, and it's like, oh, maybe they'll like this. And it's like when you give, like if you give an older person a drone, it's like, oh, you'll have fun with this. And they're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with this. I got my mom a ghost in a jar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, uh, I wish she knew it was a ghost. Yeah, yeah it's in the her. mail. No, it comes with a little death certificate, so you know it's a ghost, and it says, in this jar uh, is a ghost. Uh, he's a librarian, and what? if you press on the top of the jar, it will tell you a little bit about the ghost and sometimes sing you a song. Oh, did your mom like it? She loves it. Oh, that's good. See, you're much better at uh, giving gifts than the sun. Yeah, I think it's a great Reeve. jar. Came in like a box that looks like a coffin. Ghost in the jar. Highly recommend it. <laughs> On sale now at the Disney store. So there's two more rooms. Matt, you went to the the curse room, right? Yeah. I don't What are the, what are your options here? There's the group room, the lovers room, the queen's room and the curse room. Yeah, I went to the curse room. And you get there and there's a ghost of, I think this is the room you're, that's the most like to do with the story. Cause there's a ghost of cloud there and ghost clouds like floats into regular cloud and regular cloud passes out and it freaks out the in staff. And then yeah. you get some like black screen dialogue. You can't change anything by. Just sitting back and looking at it. What are you saying? It started moving. 
wake up. And you wake up to being rubbed and pounded, like lots of rub, rub, rub and pound, pound, pound. <laughs> and you're like, oh, this feels amazing. But then you open your eyes after your HP and MP all come back and Mucky, the Freddie Mercury type guy, is straddling <laughs> you, beating your sides. Mucky came in to help his bubby. Your yeah. Mucky's bubby. Mucky saved my life from that ghost that mm -hmm. probably came in a jar. What I didn't know was a ghost. So this ghost of Cloud seems to be a lot less confident and a lot sadder. The, I'm going to put this on my list of Cloud facts. You know, like they're, they're trying to tell you all about his backstory, because I think this has something to do with his backstory. You think? Yeah. This is like less confident Cloud. Huh. Interesting. And, and then finally, you get the group room. And remember before I said that there is someone who doesn't, who was getting mad at Square for making, uh, Final Fantasy VII gayer and queerer? Uh huh. <laughs> and how he's like, Cloud is very straight. He's the straightest character ever. You don't make him gay. You don't make him trans. In the group room, you can opt to do, uh, you get Bubby and about nine of his other friends who get into a hot tub with you and have sex with you for about 10 seconds. Yeah, John. I didn't, it wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't sure they were having sex until there are a couple lines of dialogue <laughs> where it's like, oh, okay, yeah, they're having sex. They're not. They're just having a nice group bath. And at one point, oh, I can't say what one of them says. I'll break my vow. <laughs> <laughs> there's a but, certain word that one of my co-hosts has uh decided to attempt to get me to say this episode and i will not say it say it yeah no. you can you can sort of say hey i'm not into this or you can be like yeah daddy <laughs> yeah <laughs> daddy and, and, and mucky's like so how old are you boy and uh, bubby and he's like 21 and and uh, mucky likes that Mm -hmm. He's glad you're. He probably should have asked you before getting naked with you in the hot tub. But hey, you know, at least at least uh, there there was that question was asked and answered. And uh, yeah, there's lots about uh, his penis. Kind of, there's some euphemisms about that and uh, how uncomfortable mm. Cloud is. But Cloud seems to be kind of comfortable by the end. Yeah, he he gets relaxed and. Um, Mucky uh, says that he is a very lonely um, parental figure, <laughs> and he's very happy that Cloud is uh, keeping him company. Uh-huh. He does offer you to join the Bubby Club, because they have like a, a meetup once a month over in a cabin in the woods, and he gets to bring all his Bubby friends and, and wants Cloud to come along as his special boy. But Cloud declines. Oh, <laughs> there's there's dialogue in here. The some of the dialogue from the hot tub. There's no um. There's no like attribution to some of it. It's just dialogue that appears above the hot tub. Yeah, but some of it is like uh, not to be rude or anything. But could you do someone else? Uh huh. And I th I'm pretty sure there's dialogue about like they invite him to a cabin in the country. Yep. Um, let me see what else there is. I could have swore there was, oh, they ask him to stick around and play. Mm -hmm. And they say, daddy's so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> it is great. And I love it. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah. And then after, after your little bubby session with, with Mucky, uh, they go, you go your separate ways and you can, if you'd like, go north to get a makeover, uh, in the makeup room for with the honeybees are hanging out. Yeah. All, the, all the women who operate this inn are just like honeybees. Buzz. And they're very supportive. If you're like, can you please put makeup on me? They're like, sure thing. Yeah. Yeah. They, they help Cloud look beautiful. And so you there there are I think I'm not sure if it's random or not but there's three different like uh like feedback sounds you can get from the makeup. That, oh really? Yeah, that will um let you know like how good your makeup job is. Oh wow! And I think the highest one you hear like a whooshing sound, 
And I think the lowest one you hear like a bell, a bell jingle. Huh. But I got the bell jingle. Oh, did, but did you, well, well, let's get to the, let's go to Don. Now you're ready to dress up. You've got the underwear from Mucky. You've got the makeup. You've got the diamond tiara from the guy at the materia store. That's what he gives you in return for the protein drink. You've mm-hmm. got the shimmery, silky dress and you got the wig. So you can head over to Don Corneo's mansion and the guard is like super into cloud. Just like, <laughs> Whoa, wow. Your friend is hot. <laughs> Thanks, girls. You look <laughs> your amazing. Is hotter than you. I can't believe it. <laughs> and you get inside and they're like, don't wander around. Wait here. We're going to tell you when Don's ready. So, of course, you wander around. And mm-hmm. in the basement, you find a sex dungeon. Maybe not a sex dungeon. Maybe just a regular dungeon. Seems like a dungeon dungeon. Because there seems to be. Why not like, both? Because it's got this, like, bed of spikes and, uh, like, a body cut out in it where you can strap someone down. And there's lots of blood from that bed of spikes leading to a drain in the floor. Some yeah, people are into that. that. Maybe it's raspberry lubricant. It, c- <laughs> it could be. But I just feel like this room is not consensual and not – it's not sa- – was it safe, sane, and whatever the uh, third one is? From uh, from that guy who had that sex column, Dan Savage. Yeah, Dan Savage. There's sane, uh, safe, and something else. Are you talking about good giving and game? No, there was a different one for 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 kink about kink. But uh, at any rate, maybe I'm thinking of someone else. Uh, no, yeah. you're not. I just don't know the third S. Right, and so you and. Uh, you you find Tifa down there. She's dressed all pretty. And uh, she says that... Uh, what was her reason for coming to the mansion? Who? She wants more information about right. uh, how they knew that uh, Avalanche was coming, I guess? Right. Okay, that, that does make sense. And uh, uh, so the, they always... Uh, Don Corneo always picks three girls... And Cloud's like, oh, well, it's too bad you don't have a third girl. And uh, Tifa and and Aerith, really, they get along really well, and they're kind of gossiping about Cloud to each other and kind of making fun of him, which is great. I support that. Yeah. And they're like, well, we have one idea. How about if you're the third girl? And Cloud's like, oh, what? Wh- wh- but he goes along with it because Cloud is super agreeable. Mm-hmm. And maybe curious. Curious about what? Curious about what Don Corneo's up to. Oh, all right. In his bedroom. You would think that his group bath would have satisfied any curiosity he has. No, maybe it it made him curiouser and curiouser. So, uh, so the ladies uh, decide to go. All three of them upstairs to Don's bedroom, and the guys, the guy running, is like, "Oh God, I was looking for you, ladies. Told you not to run around, but Don's ready for you." So all three of you walk in there, and he makes his choice. And you better turn off three times speed, or all the sound cues here break. <laughs> because he's walking around trying to decide on which lady to pick for his companion tonight. This I like how Cloud great. refuses to look him in the face. <laughs> so did did anyone get picked by Don Corneo? I did. Why I would did. anybody pick Cloud in that fucking ugly purple pants suit? It's not a uh, pants It's suit. a silk dress. It's, it's like a kimono. Not. It's a kimono. It's none of those things. It's a lovely silk purple kimono with I think a pink bow, I want to say. I think so, like a pink ribbon around it. Yeah, I think it's very lovely. It's just that the game can't animate legs moving properly in a dress, so <laughs> it looks like, yeah, a weird jumpsuit. I'm excited to see how this looks in the remake. Can we Me talk about too. how I was weirdly disappointed that the dress was not, like, pretty and pink? <laughs> Why is it this ugly purple? Because uh, Cloud really likes it's that color. It's kind of pretty. Mm-mm. Eris puts on like a tight red uh, date night dress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Tifa's wearing like a baby blue evening dress. Mm hmm. Which is a bit like the dress she was wearing on the date night with uh, Teen Cloud. 
She was wearing a, oh, a blue dress there. Oh, it does look like that. Good call. Saved themselves a few cents on not having to put clothes on a different model of Tifa. <laughs> <laughs> but this one doesn't have a cowboy hat. You know, that's tough to take that cowboy hat on and off that blocky square model. It's a whole different model. <laughs> that they have fucking to start Lego, from scratch. That Lego yeah, the, character the that walks around the world. They had to put in that <laughs> cowboy hat. Uh, so you get, so, uh, yeah, Don Corneo picked me. Uh, Cloud was super excited. Now there's a few things I had to reset here because I was just really wanting to, to, for Cloud to get super excited and call, uh, say like anything you want to do, daddy, which is real hot. I uh, like, went, I leaned into this as much as I could. <laughs> yeah. If you lean into it, it ends up with Cloud and Don Corneo about to make out when the girls walk in to interrupt. <laughs> yeah. And so you, you like lean in for a kiss and the girls run in and Tifa's like, Cloud, were you about to? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to reset here because I got too carried away with the scene. Uh, my, Total. My goal is to uh, date Barrett, and in order to do so, he has to. Don Corneo has to pick Cloud, and then you have to say that uh, you have a boyfriend, and his name is Barrett, <laughs> and that gives you lots of points towards romancing Barrett. So, uh, so I had to restart with that, and then, <laughs> then you get the scene of all of them threatening genital damage on Don Corneo. Like they threatened to cut it off. Oh, they threatened to cut his dick off. They threatened to smash his dick. Yeah. And they threatened to step on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which we all know some people are into. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> people are people like to have their genitals off? stepped on. Well, sometimes or the fantasy of it, but more the, the punching and stepping part. Yeah. Occasionally yeah. you read about someone who takes it a little too far, and generally the cutter gets in quite a bit of legal trouble. Yes. Yes. There are, you cannot sign away liability for damaging someone's body like that. So don't do it. Just don't role play do it. it. <laughs> just role play it. It's just as good. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's John's PSA for the episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I just don't have a dick anymore, Derek. That's what happens. We're in the role play. <laughs> that should be the title of the that should be the title of the episode. Don't actually do it. It's fine. No, Derek. <laughs> now that I've cut your dick off in this role play, I'm not ending it. We're gonna go out to dinner first. <laughs> no. Uh so Vanessa, what did you think of uh, this whole Don Corneo? I know you had some reservations about how the scene would play out. Did it play out as terribly as you thought? Well, in my game, uh, Don Corneo chose Tifa to be oh. his date for the night mm -hmm. uh, because I did not know how to make Cloud very pretty. And I was bad at squats. So I went... Uh, up to the well first i was in a room with eris and cloud and it's full of men and they're like hey don cordillo says that we can have you guys and you sort of walk around and all of the men sprites follow you do you remember that game where like you move a little guy and then the robots all kind of converge on your location Pikmin? it's like that yeah it's very much like that uh and uh, so eventually you just have to beat them all up to get them to leave you alone. Uh, and then it cut to Tifa and Don Corneo. And Don Corneo is on the bed. He's trying to have a good time with Tifa. Uh, he shouts, come, come, and sort of thrusts his hips while he is doing it. <laughs> uh, she says that she does not want to do that. Uh, Cloud and Eris burst in and he's like, Hooray, a real party getting started now. And then they all take off their dresses to reveal their battle outfits. And uh, they do fight him. Oh, really? No. no. He's just like, hey, uh, I'll give you all the information you want. Uh, by the way, just do you stand know over why there. I did that? <laughs> He's like, why do you think I gave you the information? And your options are like, you've seen the light, uh, <laughs> because you've given up on life, or because you know you'll win. And so I was like, because you know you'll win? And he's like, yep. 
and uh, then go the trap door. Trap door? Yeah. You fall through the floor. Oh, no. And into the sewer. Into the sewer. So the, the, the thing he did reveal is that they have been paying him to spy on Avalanche. And he's been collecting information on them. And now that they know that Avalanche is based out of Sector 7, they're going to send the plate down and smash it. Yeah, so you find out, or I guess Tifa and Barrett found out that Don Corneo is spying for the Shinrai and reporting directly to Heidegger. Mm -hmm. Who, what is his job? I don't know what his job is, but he does seem to be, like, in control of evil schemes. He's like the military guy. Okay. Head of schemes. <laughs> Vice president of schemes. Yes. <laughs> he has a real Brian Blessed look in this uh, this version. I think they made him less bearish in later versions. They were in, in like uh, Crisis Core and the new game. But here he's like a real Brian Blessed. And it's wonderful. He is a bear icon. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Heidegger, uh, you get a uh, cut to Shinra HQ, where Heidegger said, okay, the Turks are going to be the ones who destroy the plate. Uh, Reeve, who is the head of urban development, is totally against the plan, as is the mayor. So Shinra's like, hey, why don't you take some time off, buddy? Yeah, it turns out the mayor, he is not that important in making decisions. Mm-hmm. Don't vote for mayors. And <laughs> that's terrible advice. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> you mean don't vote for Buttigieg. <laughs> or there's two mayors right now. Or Giuliani? No, the other one. Oh, Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Oh, yeah. That guy sucks. <laughs> uh, so uh, he sees Shinra sees destroying Sector 7 as good PR for the company because he can blame it on Avalanche and then have Shinra come in and save the day and do the cleanup. It's pretty evil. That seems real evil. So you wake up in the sewers and fight a sewer ape as soon as you get up, really. Yeah. I guess you have the option of who to talk to first as well, and that affects your date night. Yep. Yep. So if you want to talk to uh, Eris first, that's good. Or talk to Tifa. Like, uh, trying to not talk to... I think talking to Eris is better for this... To get to Barrett, and that's that's my goal. So, Uh, But then you fight the sewer ape. And the sewer ape is like this big blue pig thing. It's like mm-hmm. Muscle Pig. He's the first real boss of the game. Yeah, the first <laughs> real boss of the game. And he's throwing his giant fists at you. And I killed this guy in like a, a minute. Yeah, he's super easy. Super easy boss. Uh, but the first real boss of the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, so you get out of the sewers and end up in the ghostly filled train graveyard place. Yeah, this place always confuses me. Uh, like, it takes me a few minutes to find out where I'm supposed to go. Yeah, me too. There's, like, one area where you can, like, walk up a beam that doesn't make seem obvious, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes a minute for me to, like, orient myself here. Um. Yeah, there's some monsters you can steal, like, a good staff for Eris from. Oh, you got steel materia now, which is really useful. Uh, Put it on Tifa, because she has... Uh, I think the highest dexterity at the time, so she's really good at stealing stuff. Mm-hmm. That's why they just slapped it right on her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, as you go through this this area, uh, you get to the end and you can talk to the conductor. Have you been talking to the conductor? Because he is great every time. Like he's like, well, maybe one day I'll get to open the crossing gate to my heart and let the train of love in. <laughs> he's just ta- he, like every time you talk to him he has different wisdom about seeing people come and go and how being a conductor is observing the pace of life and watching love and how he loves it but if you talk to him now he's like hey yeah um i know that i've heard rumors that shinra is gonna destroy this town and kill everybody here but i can't leave this is where i belong which is real sad 
Yeah. That was pretty sad. <laughs> Did you talk to that couple at the train station? Uh, this was the last chunker where they're like, let's do it. I love you so much. I love you too. Let's kill ourselves. And then they do. What? Yeah. This what? is a terrible district of despair. It is. Everyone's super depressed. So they're like, uh, yeah, that couple kills themselves. And now you get to uh, the plate. And oh boy, everyone's crowding around the entrance to the pillars. You hear gunfire. And uh, as you step up to get inside the plate, Wedge gets knocked down. No. No. Wedge. No. Wedge. Everyone's favorite beefy boy. He he he's dying, and and you can be nice to him, or you can be cloudy to him, and and uh, in the end, he just was glad cloud cared, and so same with as you start going up the uh, the uh, oh, but before that, uh, Tifa asks Eris to go find Marlene in Seventh Heaven and take her somewhere safe, and Eris goes off to do that. Which is the whole timing of this doesn't make a whole lot of sense because then you start walking up the tower, you run into first Biggs, the unremarkable member of Avalanche who is also dying, and uh, then Jesse who was dying, and she was just super happy to see Cloud one more time, and that was really sad. I love Jesse. Yeah, they yeah, all die. It's all sad. your friends. Do mm-hmm. they die though? I feel like they all show back up later. No, I think Do they're. They? All, I, think I think they're, they're all, all dead. dead. I bet you can run into them in different towns and shit. They might reuse the model, but I think Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse are dead for real, real. Even though you have so. all this healing magic and <laughs> rays and cure. Matt doesn't and think Phoenix so, guys. Downs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not, I'm not buying it. I've played these Final Fantasy games before. I know how this goes. You think they'll show up in the ending waving? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Matt knows that there's no actual final death in a Final Fantasy game. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Boy, I can't believe we have so many party members already, too. Four. It's real tough to balance. Okay. You get a lot of party members really quickly in this game. Mm-hmm. So you head up to uh, the, the top of the plate, and uh, Barrett is there, and he is trying to drive off people and uh while he's doing that unfortunately a member of the turks arrives and which one is it reno i think yeah reno yeah reno shows up arms the bomb and it's like hey, hey, hey you suckers i've got the bomb uh armed it's too late and you can fight him and he's the coolest. He's like, sorry, guys, I got to go as soon as he's, you get close to beating him. And he jumps on that horrible helicopter. And uh, I love the helicopter. Is- it reminds me of Thanos' helicopter from the old, I don't know, Fantastic Four, whatever it is, when Thanos, you know, had a helicopter. <laughs> it looks real dumb. It's and real also dumb. Helicopter is Sang, who and they're always I, monologuing like, off the back of it, you know, like you do on a helicopter. <laughs> it's well, not so at does, all loud. <laughs> so does Sang, and the, like the the game's like seems to m- treat it like you should know who Sang is, even though I think this is the first time you meet Sang. Is it? I thought we'd run into him already. I thought you ran into. Maybe. Uh, was it Sang? See, one of the no. scenes. Reno was, sh- was the one that showed up in the church. Yeah, Reno was in the church, and Shinra was in the uh, sector five or five, number five yeah, reactor. President Shinra was in the reactor. Yeah, so was there I, I a cutscene f- about Eris? That's ha- after this. Is it? Yeah, it's right after this, basically. Okay. Uh, Sang is on the helicopter and says, "Hey, it's not a normal time bomb. If you t- try to tamper with it, it's just going to explode." Oh, and by the way. Here's Eris, who I don't know you know, but hey, she's here too. He knows. And <laughs> uh, again, Eris- I think that there was a cutscene during the escape from the church where we saw Sang discussing I mean, Eris. You Should see we- that there is one in just a second where he does. Oh, wait, wait. Maybe when they were flashing back to when they were first trying to pick up Eris. Yeah. When they were when they were maybe that but it may, maybe that's later in this episode. Yeah, I think that's right about to happen. All right. Yeah. 
So well, Eris probably told them. Like they yeah. picked her up and she's like, Hey, guess what? My best friend is named Cloud. He has a spiky hair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably what she said is <laughs> Yeah, me, I'm claiming responsibility for the Shinra bombing with me and my terrorist gang Avalanche. That, that seems like a bad idea. Why would she do that? Because she's a terrorist, John. That's what yeah, terrorists do. Yeah, she's a do. martyr. <laughs> so, uh, one Hang thing Eris on. does say is she is safe. She's not specific who she's talking about, but she says she is safe. And uh, then the plate falls they have to j- jump on a piece of dangling wire to get the heck out of there and they barely make it there's a great cutscene of someone watching tv looking up and seeing the plate about to fall uh everyone trying to run out of the way but everybody it's terrible they squashed a whole neighborhood how many people live down there john ah uh, hundreds of thousands what hundreds of thousands I assume lots of people died in this. Uh, it's like this... they squished the Bronx. Yeah. Like if Manhattan floated above the rest of the boroughs and they just squished one of them. And I guess whoever was on top of the plate squished too. Yeah, so it's they like might be. they dropped Washington Heights on the Bronx. <laughs> yep. And bo- yeah, I think they kind of lost both. Um, This game does a poor job establishing the size of this town. Yes, I agree. All, this this beginning to me has felt actually, honestly, very rushed, um, and it's not taking its time to like set up this city or anything, right. really. So to me, it definitely felt like there was just some property damage. Yeah, I kind of, I, I, I guess I'm just letting my imagination fill in the blanks here, which uh, is only because I really like this game. So I imagine that it's a lot of people dying because you never really see what the top plate is like and i'm assuming you don't see the entirety of sector uh sector seven right because if what we saw was the entirety of sector seven then it's probably like 16 people died which seems less of a tragedy (laughs) oh no (laughs) that you're right that is wrong any loss of an innocent life is a tragedy it's true and it can't be quantified by mass. Well, isn't 16 a tragedy and a million a statistic? Excuse me? That's like a quote about how humans process numbers. When they hear a million people die, they can't really – they can't relate to it the same way oh, as if you yeah, see like I think you're right, actually. 16 people die. Yeah. It's just uh, the way the brain works. Uh, so the plate falls. Chaos everywhere. And the cat slide – is impaled by pieces of rebar. Sad. The cat slide, the one Jim is going to build in his backyard. Mm -hmm. The backyard of my apartment. Yep, the backyard of your apartment. (laughs) It's our favorite character in the whole game. Yeah. Uh, So (laughs) Barrett is very upset about Marlene, and Tifa's like, hey, uh, when she said she's safe, I think she means Marlene. So we should maybe go try to track down Eris's house. And uh, on the way, Cloud was like, I don't know who the ancients are. Like, what, what's all this about ancients? And then he gets like a weird flash, you know, his brain flash that he gets. Mm-hmm. And he, he gets a flash to someone saying they are an ancient and the ancients are the rightful heirs to the planet. Uh, at first, I thought this was Eris, but then Cloud says, Sephiroth? Top of all? What? What does Cloud know about Sephiroth? And, and I thought I thought that Eris was the last of the ancients. Yeah. Hmm. So you get to Eris's house. Marlene is there, and she is safe. Uh, but you get Elmira sort of gives you some backstory on on uh. Eris and says, basically, Shinra wanted her because they've been trying to get her for years. She's the last ancient. Uh, Elmira is not Eris's real mom. You get a flashback, a, a really sad, sweet flashback to the depressing train station where Elmira was waiting for her husband to come back on leave from the war. And uh, he didn't show up, but she kept coming every day until one day she she came across a mom and her daughter and the mom was dying. She says this happens a lot during the war. You'd see it all the time. Mothers and daughters starving to death. 
The mother asks, <laughs> the mother asks Elmira to take care of her daughter. And Elmira does. And this little girl is so special. She just talks all the time and she seems to have an uncanny knowledge of things. Like at one point, she just tells the mom, I'm sorry. And the mom's like, why? Why, why are you sorry? And she's like, someone you care about just died. And she asked how she knew it. She said she could feel it, that the planet talks to her, but that she shouldn't be sad because even though he's died, he's just returned to the planet. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is her special power and her connection to the earth. But unfortunately, Sang keeps coming by and he wants to kidnap Eris or, but he seems to ask permission, which is really nice. Yeah, and they do this over the course of, like, ten years. <laughs> like, they just come by every once in a while, I guess, and ask if they can have her. Yeah, they're like, uh, hey, uh, you know your, uh, your adopted daughter? You you sick of her yet? Or what? <laughs> yeah. Like, can, can we just have that kid? And they're like, no, thank you. And then you and come I guess- back and they're like, how about boarding school? You want to send her to boarding school with us, please? No, thank you. Eris uh, realizes she has some leverage, and that's why she gave herself up, I guess? I don't exactly know what happened. I guess she wanted to save Marlene, and that's why she did it? Yeah, I suppose. Unclear. Hmm. This game gets a little muddly sometimes. <laughs> yep. Uh, I, so, think it was, I think it's because she wanted to save Marlene. Um, yeah. So, has she revealed that she's an ancient? Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, she's, she's like, I'm heckin' old. What's yeah, she's, an ancient? She's like, I'm an ancient! Last but did she of my grow kind. up? Or has she been the same age the whole time? She does grow up. She's like, she. I think she was a little kid at the beginning and, and it is. But I think the ancient's like the the race? Yeah, it's the name of their people. Yeah, She's not I, saying that she herself is ancient. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, an ancient sounds to me like some sort of immortal being. But maybe it's like a, I don't know, it's like a slightly different kind of human or something. But uh, Elmira then shows Barrett uh, his daughter, and he's real happy. But she says she's mad that he left her at a bar by herself. And uh, he's like, well, look, I, I want to take care of Marlene, but I also know I, like, this is the last chance to save the planet. I got to save the planet. He feels very conflicted about it, but not conv- conflicted enough to, to, do anything. <laughs> to, to stay with his daughter because he wants to come with Cloud and, to rescue Eris. And so does Tifa. Yeah. He's just like, you like adopting kids, right? How about <laughs> you take this one? Yeah. Take care of this one. So she's, she agrees to it and he goes out to selfishly risk his life once again. Or is it selflessly? What do you think, Vanessa? Well, that's an important question. What's the greater responsibility of a father to be there for their child or to work for a better world for their child? Hmm. I mean, the girl needs a world to live in, and he thinks that this fracking is going to tear the world apart. But on the other hand, you only get so many nights to tuck them in. Isn't that right, Matt and Jim? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tuck true. them in at night. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know what this is, Jim? What? The end of the chunker. <gasps> the end of the chunker? What are we doing next time? Next, well, before that, there's a bullshit mini game of doing squats. Squat, Ooh, squat, the squats squat, 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 squat. Uh, I, it's just a matter of pressing things in a certain order as fast as you can. If you mess up the order, there's like a, a little five second animation of squat looking, or s- not squat, cloud looking confused. It's like scratching his head. Yeah. And what is, what is the, what is the order of the buttons? It's like circle X square. I think it's square X circle. Square X circle. Okay. Y X A. Y X A. Left, bottom, right. Left, bottom, right. <laughs> it's not really about doing it super fast. I think it's about finding a rhythm. Yeah. And doing it consistently yes. and not screwing it up. All you have just to do like is just let life. the animate let let the animation of the button finish and then do the next button. Yeah. Oh. When you squat, it's important to maintain proper form. You mm-hmm. want to try to get yeah, back straight, uh upper legs 
parallel to the floor. You want to get lower weight so that you can go lower and do the full form of the workout. Mm -hmm. But don't strain yourself. Like, do what feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But don't do a half squat because those are not good for you. You should be doing the full motion. And uh, breathe out as you stand up. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, that's it for that mini game. Not a super exciting one, but we get some great ones coming up. I think next time is a real good one. This game's chalk get full out of on mini the games. Highway. Oh. And get out on the highway. Get out on the highway. So you can get out on the highway. Get out on the highway. Gonna go out on the highway. Next time on Square Roots, the end of Midgar, you'll arrive, arrive at calm. That's where you go to next time. That was a great song. It (laughs) really made me feel like I was on the highway, that I'd gotten out on it, (laughs) and uh, that I was moving along it with the wind going through my hair. That's a song I sing to myself all the time, where I sing... Born to Ride, but all I say is get out on the highway over and over again. <laughs> One of the things I like about the next chunker is that we can, I guess we can play up to this point. They do this thing in Calm where they just kind of pause the game for a minute to recap everything that's happened so far. No, oh, that's fun. I find well, it really useful. That they, happens they do it like two or three times in this, times game. In this game. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always optional. It's like, so... Do you want to tell us what's happened so far? Yeah. (laughs) Which is really helpful for me because, let's be honest, I only half pay attention to any of this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know that feeling at all. (laughs) I'm trying so hard to pay so much attention to this game and because I I just got really confused last time. So I really want to figure it out. I'm going to figure this it's out this time. It's hard. I mean, y'all know I'm a nerd. I'm as nerdy as anyone else nerdy can be. But I also have this, like, I grew up in Seattle grunge, kind of too cool for school thing. And sometimes it prevents me from embracing my full nerdiness. So when I hear something like, we have to get the great white dragon to give us its sacred scale so we can climb the mountains of Gondor and uh, become the <laughs> eclipse warriors of the great cloud sky i start wanting to shove someone in a locker and i tune out sometimes vanessa shoves me in a locker and she bought a set of lockers for the square roots house just to do this which seems very is that what those are for yeah (laughs) vanessa that's cruel but i I do hear john kind of like saying boy what they say earlier Teach me, about- Daddy, from the locker sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, huh. Can't I tell if this is something Canadians I should intervene in or. Liked it. Now, Canadians like being shoved in lockers because then they can pop their heads out like they're on laughing and be like, water. And then the water comes down from the ceiling. And that's how I get my shower in the morning. <laughs> John I has been know, stomping Vanessa. around the house for the last three days, the Square Roots house for the last three days, shouting, I'm so lonely, Daddy, at us. It's It's been a little awkward. <laughs> no, Daddy's a, so lonely. Daddy's so lonely. Excuse me. Or anything you want, Daddy. There's two Daddies. <laughs> no, that's what you whisper from the locker. We're all a little confused. If you're that We're in there. lonely, It's not large get, enough for two people. Uh, if you're that lonely, get a puppy. Boy. S- Are you ready for squarely against? Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Squarely against. Jim, what are you squarely against? Ooh, I'm going to say, um, actually, this was, I've played through this game a bunch, but I've never done the honeybee in part until this playthrough. What? In fact, I skipped it. 
uh, in this playthrough. And then yesterday I was like, you know what? I'm going to zip through the beginning of the game just so I can finally do the honey bee in part. So I started a brand new game and played it <laughs> through the honey bee in section, through the Don Corneo section where he picks cloud, um, just so I could experience all this for the first time. And it was worth it. It's it amazing. Was weird and silly and a lot gayer than I had been led to believe. <laughs> <laughs> that leads to my roundly four. I'm roundly four. How gay this game is! <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> Vanessa, yeah. What are you roundly four or squarely against? Uh, I'm roundly four. Dress up time. Uh, just like you fellas. Uh, I loved that this game got very gay very quickly. Uh, I like how amenable Cloud is to dressing up in his pretty dress. Uh, I didn't understand the wig because I felt like if they just brushed the spikes out of his hair and, you know, used a little bit of softening conditioner, he could have a lovely bob. Uh, no wig required, but I guess his spikes are really sprayed in there at this point. Or maybe that's the shape of his head and his hair is very short. I don't know. Anyway, I liked being able to choose what kind of dress I wanted uh, I liked being a pretty lady. I didn't like the sexual assault elements, uh, but I did like that they were thwarted. Mm -hmm. And my cloud was consenting. Well, that's true <laughs> to your to your big bubble bath time. Mm, well, that and my first until I had to reset so I could get Barrett points. I was consenting with Don Corneo. I was right. like, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so uh, I guess sex positivity is something that we do look for in these games, and uh, here you go. <laughs> it's not great representation, but it's representation. <laughs> you know what? It's 1995 representation out of Japan, and it's uh, as good as we could possibly hope for. Mm -hmm. At least it's not, like, hateful. No, it's it's comedic. And there was that period of time... Uh, you know, well, for years and decades, actually, where the only portrayals of gay people would really be as a comedic kind of thing. If it wasn't mm -hmm. like you gross, it was for comedy. And comedy is better than you gross. Mm hmm. Matthew. Yes. What are you roundly for or squarely against? Uh, boy, I kind of already talked about it, but I do feel like it's maybe cutting. Uh, it almost feels like it's missing content that's going by so fast. The city is so small. I remember it being so big. I guess that's just nostalgia, gang. Mm -hmm. So, that. Little, <laughs> little teenage Matt's brain was filling in all the blanks and mm -hmm. just imagining walking around this huge metropolis. Mm -hmm. It's good to use your imagination, though. I agree. Hey, Jim. Yeah. Why don't you read this email? Sure. So we got an email, and this email is from our listener, Jamie. It says, hey, John, Jim, Matt, and Vanessa, I was listening to the first episode of your playthrough of Final Fantasy VII, and the question came up about what is Eris' default name in the remaster. I can't speak for all the remaster ports out there, but I'm playing it on the Switch, and her default name is indeed Eris. I remember because I changed her name to Aerith since I didn't know about her original name in the Japanese version when I first played through it about six or so years ago. Love the show. Been listening since the Final Fantasy X playthrough. Carry on. I think we got that email ten minutes after the episode came out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got it today. <laughs> they didn't even hear the... the uh uh, what's the name of that show with Bernie Sanders? Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, they didn't even hear the Curb <laughs> Bernie your, Sanders. <laughs> the Curb Your Enthusiasm <laughs> part. Uh, and also, one thing I've noticed about myself, when I'm like dead set on being right about something, I'm like 95% wrong most of the time. Like, I'm almost always wrong when I think I'm right. So, what does that mean about my opinions? Huh. 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 Hmm. Huh. <laughs> Perhaps uh, the the dead set in your rightness is a subconscious form of defensiveness because deep down you know you're wrong. I think you're correct. 
Yeah, that's my psychoanalyzing corner. Uh, if this email is from the same Jamie who follows us on Twitter, hi, Jamie. Uh, I have noticed your interaction and appreciate it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, friends. Well, John Brandon here is going to leave. So you are wrapping up the show yourselves. See you, pal. Have Bye, John. a great time. Bye, Goodbye. Johnny. Love you. Bye. Bye. Thank goodness that nerd is gone. I just want to shove him in a I locker. Know. I know. Jesus Christ. Are you guys ready hey, to guys, talk about who Final Fantasy VII or what? <laughs> <laughs> How many polygon who? dongs are in this episode? Guys, who wants to talk about how great our Patreon is? I think it should it's so be great. Matt. Oh boy, it's so great! You all, uh, you should subscribe to our Patreon. That's patreoncom Roots podcast. We have two tiers available. At the uh, the first tier for three dollars, you can uh, download our sweet back catalog of bonus episodes as well as monthly bonus episodes. Last week, we released our great episode on Final Fantasy VII's prequel movie, Final Fantasy Spirits Within, uh, and you should go check that out right this minute. It was hilarious, right? Am I right? It will be. <laughs> and uh, at the $5 tier, you get to vote, and I think that uh, we're probably doing a vote game pretty soon, right? Isn't that what we discussed? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I think we're going to do a vote after Final Fantasy VII, so probably best to get in on that Patreon right now, because you don't want to miss that, because God knows we're terrible about announcing things in a timely manner. Yeah. So, We also aren't good at figuring out how many days from a particular day is the other day, so many times we'll say that voting is open for like a certain amount of time, and then it turns out it's not really. It's fun. We're pretty bad at this. So, patreon.com slash square roots podcasts. One of the bonuses is, uh, at any level, we will read your name at the end of the show. And we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Mm. Who's going to kick us off? I think you're first on the list, Mathonicus. Uh, yeah, let me pull up the list. Mathonicus would like to thank. Mathonicus would like to thank Florian Jonas Kramer. I'm not going to do this the whole time. Vanessa's actual for real, real mom. Robert T. Cyril the Wolf. Hexagon. The Phantom Scufflaws of the Opera. Justin Ham. Randy Pierce. Benjamin Avner. Race Jenkins. Jordan O'Boyle. T. Bumpkins. G. Bailey. Miguel Torres. Megan Sullivan. Style of the Beholder. Rising Hopper. And John totally did. Justin Rash, Robert M. Pullum, Aaron Bachman, Devin Sloan, Bradley, bloop, 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 Brady A. Berman, Bree Girth, Matthew Newlin, David Green, Brian Pitt, Reddit is Harold Lauder. Mary, Queen of Scoffs, Ward Childress, Dr. Steve Stone, Nawford, Squall would be Cloud in a Fight, Support Colin Kaepernick, Don't Watch the NFL, Good, good, let the hate flow through you. David Shook, Aaron Little, Joshua Bennett, Hudson Roth, Wonder Swan, Amanda Douglas, Matt Jorgensen, Armin Hammer, Matthew Casterline, Eric Garb, It's a Kiwami Mario, Citrus C, Andy M, Wash in the Wind, Tyler Petty, Ross Hartley, The Mighty Monarch, Andy Smith, George Brady, Stephen Croc, Stu Skeel, Ashley T, Cameron Showy, and Tom. Ron 2, Sean Walsh, Metal Gear Solid 1 in 2021, Vanessa's fourth mom, Cloud Strife's distant cousin, Rainy Altercation, Jameson, Christian Go, Livin' La Vida Yoda, Jonathan Ellsworth, Isaac Wright, DeJethro, Jared Collins, Sexy Grandma's boy toy is Jonathan Smith, Cowman Mosser, James Hostetler, Moist gasm. Oh no. <laughs> uh, Lexa Varial. Force Lightning, go Force Lightning. Chris Penyak. KGG Loth. Michael Crawford. Mike Bloomberg is Shinra. Just Jerry. Fine, say everyone's name. At least it annoys Matt. And I'll keep going with Johnny's part. How about that? Aren't I kind? Sure. Captain Awesome, Patrick W. Bears, Greg Lackerite. Wait, Gage Lackery. <laughs> Not Greg Lackerite. 
I'm sorry. Paul Bursch, Andrew Zimmerman, that one guy, Stephen Paget, Cloudy with a chance of meteor, Mr. Mallard, Patrick, I need a new dumb Patreon name, Coover, Resty Kamada, Chewy, I hardly know he, Joseph, Tracy Tanoff, Matthew sounds like TJ Miller, Enemy Skill is the Best of Materia, Jake Dickerson, Ryan Miller, Samu Mitchell, PJ Ennis, Chris Ryan, Huxley Agana, Agana. I'm, I'm losing steam here, boys. <laughs> Huxley Iguana, Golendo, Sean Gonzalez, Alexander, Joe Kick, Gray Code, Nathan Poirot, Gregory, Andrew, O, oh, and Andy Best. Oh, I shouldn't have taken on two chunkers. I should have known it was too much for my fragile little self to handle. And listeners whose names I've mangled, I apologize. And mm. co-hosts, I apologize to you as well. We forgive you. Thanks. This time. <laughs> oh, no. Are we done? No, you got to do the outro. That was fun to watch because Vanessa's profile <laughs> picture looks like somebody that's running for office. And it was looking at me the whole time. It was like reading out a list of voters. I don't know. I got a little lost. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, that's it for this episode of Square Roots. If you'd like to send us an email to have read on the air, you can do so uh, by emailing us at squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. Come see us at our Facebook group, the Square Roots Podcast Group for smart, cool, very attractive people. Or you can follow us on Twitter. We are at Square Roots Pod. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And a big thanks to Tetramino for letting us use their mix of J-E-N-O-V-A and Birth of a God. You can support Tetramino on Patreon or check out their YouTube at Tetramino VG Band. Links to all of their properties in our show notes. That song slaps. Yeah, they're really good. They're all of really their good. covers are awesome. All right, everybody. For Square Roots, I am Jim Banks. I'm Matthew Van Zant. I'm Johnny Brandon. And I'm Vanessa. <laughs> Bye. Bye.